Well, welcome to the show. The late, great college basketball coach, Jimmy Valvano, once said that everyone should do three things every day. Think, laugh, and cry. Unfortunately, David Wood couldn't do any of those things. He was diagnosed with an anti-personality disorder, so he lived without thinking, laughing, or crying until the day he learned how to love. If my child died, I would want to cry my eyes out. Um, I don't think I would. Sociopaths don't form normal emotional attachments to other people. They lack empathy. When they see a person suffering, they don't feel bad over it. I was in high school biology when evolutionary theory was really laid out for us. Species develop new characteristics, new traits, and then those can actually eventually take over. And so I concluded that maybe I had reached a higher stage of humanity where I wasn't held back by emotions the way other people were. And so I came to regard all these little rules that people tell you to follow as kind of brainwashing me breaking into places and you know, breaking into the school or stealing things. I felt like I was stripping away these layers of rules that people had been imposing on me my entire life. And it was, a, it was an amazing feeling. And if I really wanted to, to sort of be free of everything I'd been, I'd been brainwashed into thinking about right and wrong, and I decided uh, to kill my dad. And I decided to do it in a brutal fashion, not a, not a gunshot or anything, I was gonna do it with a hammer. When I walked up to my dad, I've got a, I had a hammer in my hand, and I hit him in the head seven or eight times with a ball beam hammer until I thought he was dead, and uh, I just left. One of his friends, Jim, found him, covered in blood, took him to a hospital, and so I went and told my mom, hey, I may have done this because I, I think I'm being told on at that moment. I mean, instead of taking me to uh, the police or anything, she took me to a psychiatric hospital. They made a report based on the, the time that I was there, and it said antisocial personality disorder. Eventually, Virginia had them remove me from the psychiatric hospital and take me to jail. Since my dad survived, I was convicted of malicious wounding. I was sentenced to 10 years in prison. There was a Christian named Randy, and he was a bit different from everyone else. And one day he was reading his Bible, and I walked up to him and I said, hey, you know why you're reading your Bible? You're reading your Bible because you're born in the United States. If you'd been born in China, you'd be a Buddhist. If you'd been born in India, you'd be a Hindu. If you'd been born in Saudi Arabia, you'd be a Muslim, because people like you believe whatever you're taught to believe. He started arguing with me and started tearing me to pieces. And that was very different from other Christians that I'd argued with in the past. I ended up in, uh, for a couple of months, a series of arguments with Randy about Christianity versus my worldview. Randy was winning the arguments that we would get into. I'm not gonna beat him this way. I'm gonna have to really learn the Bible so that I can respond to him. I regarded that as my weakness. I have to say I was impressed with Jesus. I went from thinking that I'm the best person in the world to thinking that I'm the worst person in the world. The question came up, either I'm stuck like this, or there's someone out there who can deal with this. Who, out of anyone, had the ability to change, radically change, severely messed up people it's Jesus or it's nothing. It's Jesus or there is just no hope. I bowed down and I prayed and I said, God, I don't know if I'm going to believe in you tomorrow, but I believe in you right now. If you can do anything with me, you're welcome to it. And I ran through the sort of sinner's prayer that I'd heard um, there in the jail. When I sat up, uh, the whole world looked different. It looked like I was in a different place, like everything was a different color. And I didn't know if this was, you know, just something weird going on, but it was, uh, I didn't want to hurt anyone at that point. And uh, 
It's an, uh, an amazing calm. I felt like I'd been physically nonstop brawling all my life, and then I finally could just sit down and rest. While I was in prison, I thought it would be bad to actually confess because my dad, again, had no recollection. I'm a Christian now. I can't spend my entire life saying I haven't done something that I've done. I'm going to write a letter to my dad right now and uh, lay everything out to him. He came to see me at the, at the, at the first chance and um, he said, it's okay. And uh, he forgives me. And, and he told me, he said, he said, I really didn't think you did it. And so for him to hear all of that at once and then to forgive me, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's amazing stuff. Between jail and prison, I was locked up for a little over five years. I got out of uh, prison in 2000 and started college immediately. Started arguing with a young woman who was an agnostic and she eventually became a Christian and we were married the following year. We have kids and, you know, getting to watch them grow up and given the things I've done, I should not be able to have this sort of, this sort of normal life. It, uh, it, it kind of blows me away. I want people out there to know that there is a creator to this world, that there is a, a point to this world, that other people um, are important, that it's not just all about you. Jesus rose from the dead, and that shows that there is a point to everything, that there is a creator, that he does care about us, and that he entered this world to die for us. And that is a message that matters because it changes everything. The message that matters because it changes everything. And that's the whole point of the Gospel of John and the opening. You know, the word, the logos. Another way to translate that is the message. The message was with God. The message was God, and the message came here and took on flesh and dwelt among us so that we could behold him. We could, we could see what God was, was like. Jesus came to reveal the Father. He came to reveal the wonderful message that God is love. He so loves the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, that's you, whosoever believes in him would not perish, but have everlasting life to change what happened, how the world was broken by what we did in the Garden of Eden. Broken. All creation came under a curse we, we had the knowledge now of good and evil, and with that knowledge continually chose to do what was wrong. And some of us, our conscience got seared along the way. We didn't even recognize we were doing wrong anymore. It just seemed to not bother us. But Jesus came, and he came to change all that. And he came to change you and to give you life and life everlasting, to remake you. I love David's prayer. If you can do anything with me, then take me. Here I am. If you can do anything with me. David had given up on himself. He had come to that kind of a bottom where he didn't see any hope, didn't see any chance. But he said to God, God, I believe in you right now. And if there is anything you can do with me, then do it. Take me. And you heard what he said. Suddenly a calm came over him. He was able to sit down and rest. And all that burden, all that guilt, all of that was taken away. He was able to sit down and rest. And that's what Jesus promises, that you're able to enter into his rest. The rest that is a peace that passes all understanding, where you understand he has your future. 
you understand that your past has been forgiven, you've been given, been given newness of life, behold, all things are made new. And you can walk in that, you can walk in that light with the confidence that you'll be with Him for all eternity. It's a wonderful thing. It's wonderful news. It's the best news the world has ever heard. Now, here it is for you. If you want this, it's real easy. All you have to do is pray the same way David prayed. If there's anything you can do with my life, here it is. And just surrender to say, Lord, not my will anymore, but let your will be done. If you can change me, if you can make me new, then here I am. And all you have to do is pray that and ask for it. And he'll come through. He'll come through for you. Now, some of you say, well, I prayed that. And then somewhere along the way, I, I decided to do something. And, and I decided to take a wrong turn. Well, there's hope for you, too. That if you're, if you're able to say, Jesus, forgive me. Could you cleanse me? Could you make me new again? He'll do that. The Bible promises that if we confess our sins, he will be faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It's that simple. It's that same jailhouse prayer that David learned. Here I am. If you can do anything with me, take me. If you want help with this prayer, if you want to make this decision today, all you have to do is call us, 888 777-1999. When you call, just say to the person who picks up that phone, I want, to, I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to become a Christian today. When you call, I've got something free for you. It's a CD teaching of what's the, what do Christians believe? What are the pillars of the faith? How do you live the Christian life? What is all of this about? How do you start? I also encourage you to get a copy of the Bible. If you don't have one, we have one free for you online. All you have to do is log on to CBN.com. And there's a place there in the spiritual life section where you can have, have a Bible. We'll take you through the Bible in a year. You can have, be part of a Bible reading program where you read it every single day. It's through reading the Word that you renew your mind. I also encourage you to join a local church. It's in the fellowship of believers that we grow in Christ. But it all starts with that prayer and that decision. So make that phone call right now, 888-777-1999.